podcast. Hi everyone, today I invite two of our guests, Anna and Easy, in my home, home cars. <laughs> so, welcome. Thank you. Thank Would you. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Do you want to go first? Sure. Um, I'm Izzy Eastick and at oh. Falmouth Uni, which is how I know Emily. <laughs> um, yeah. I, yeah, I'm basically the same, apart from my name's Anna Harris. I've also <laughs> just graduated from Fine Art, and again, that's how I know Emily. Yeah, so thank you so much for taking your time to actually come to Absolutely. my sort of homecast. Not a problem. <laughs> and just slightly to bring up what is about my uh, project as well. So this year I'm like, inviting 12 guesses um, based on... I invite them and bring their objects and their story and receive from the message and paint a story again. So I'm so excited mm-hmm. to see what objects you guys been bringing to me and share your experience and story as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, what objects or story you guys been bringing up to me? Would you mind to share about it? Absolutely. We've just got to decide who goes first. <laughs> you go for it. Okay. <laughs> so I brought my chicken. And I'd it's like so to highlight, adorable. for the listener, this is not a real chicken. It's a it's a chicken doorstop. So it's kind of like a cuddly chicken, but he's got quite a weight to him. Um, it's quite round. He's very round and really comforting to hold, I'm finding, which I haven't... I haven't held him in a while, so it's nice yeah. to hold him. Um, I think, and I do feel bad that I've slightly forgotten his name, but I think I called him Gerald when I first got him. Um, and essentially, I think... So, I think I got him... Ooh, maths. When was, like, 2016, 2017? How many years ago was that? Five. Five? Maybe five or six years ago? I'm not good at maths. <laughs> yeah, probably five or six years ago. <laughs> so, like, five or six years ago, he's not, like, a cuddly toy that I've grown up with or anything. Um, I think it was one of those... I don't know if you had this, but, like, you know when you're kind of getting ready to go to uni and kind of you mm. get a list of, like, things you should take with you mm. and everyone always says a doorstop. Mm. And it's kind of that thing of like, oh, when you go to uni, you prop your door open and that's how you make friends, that sort of thing. Mm. Um, So that's basically the exact reason why I got Gerald, because I think I was first going to go to uni, if I'm getting my dates right, in about 2017. Um, So I bought him, I think he was on a family holiday, maybe in Wales. Um, I just saw him in a little second-hand shop and I was like, I want that one. I want that chicken. And they brought me a different one out from the back and I was like, no, I want the one on the shelf. <laughs> like a little child, even though I was definitely maybe 18 or 19. At the <laughs> um, and yeah, so he came with me to uh, my first university, which was I started uni at Cambridge doing uh, natural sciences. Um, so he was my... He's, he's kind of travelled with me from that. Um, and I think... Yeah, I, I don't think he worked as a doorstop because the door was slidey in my... Oh. My first accommodation was really weird. It was, like, almost an office block. Oh. Like, an office of my tutor was, like, opposite where I slept. It was oh. really bizarre. Um, so, yeah, I had him trying to prop open my door, but he don't think he really worked, so he just was a little mascot. Um, and then, yeah, so I kind of did a, a little bit at Cambridge and then I realised that I hated... Well, not hated science, but... I didn't want to do science all the time. So I I hated it at that time. <laughs> um, and so I left Cambridge and then did a foundation, an art foundation, and then obviously came to Falmouth. Um, and he came with me to Falmouth too. Um, I'm trying to remember in Chook, which was our first year accommodation, if he would have worked as a doorstop. I have a feeling the doors were too heavy for I him. I think the doors were quite heavy in <laughs> Chook. <laughs> so basically, he's never worked as a doorstop. Oh. He's made me no friends, oh. but I enjoy his presence in my life. He is a friend in himself. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, oh. yeah, he's just kind of, he's he's travelled with me. And I suppose, I think there's, it's it's maybe not the most exciting of stories, but I feel like there's some themes in there somewhere about friendship and life. And I feel like that that period of time where you kind of make that transition from living at home to like going to uni mm. especially if it's a bit of a bumpy ride and you go like back and forth a little bit yeah. is a very interesting time of life so that's what Gerald represents to me in a very fun Aww. and playful way <laughs> it's also it's like a choice decision as well it's because you were sort of said that like you're sort of like in Cambridge and sort of doing the science mm. and stuff and you like jump into fine art it was just like a really big different of yeah. subjects so how do you find it do you actually like 
find a struggle when you transfer to a different mm. university or I think like... the peak of struggle was at Cambridge because obviously like I went to the, like that was the first time I'd gone to university and it was a very big deal like it was mm. I don't think I'd quite emotionally wrapped my head around how intense it is to and I'm sure you got this heightened to be like left in a new place and yeah. then be like oh no I, I don't know anyone I don't know where I am I don't know what I'm doing mm-hmm. like you don't kind of I wasn't emotionally prepared for how much of a complete like change of life that was um, and then for it to be obviously Cambridge is quite an intense university we were actually speaking about this earlier in terms of like I think Falmouth is nice because it's a bit less competitive mm. whereas Cambridge is a very like competitive place um, and then when you're studying a subject that you don't like, it just it was very unenjoyable for me at the time. Mm. Um, so actually, like, the biggest struggle was choosing to leave that because obviously it's, like, quite a big deal. It, like, feels... It's easy to, like, look back now and be like, oh, and then I left. But it's, like, at the time, like, actually coming to that decision oh, was wow. difficult. But then actually when I came to Falmouth, I found it a lot easier because I was like, well, I've done this before. Like, I was so ready to leave by that point. I was like, <laughs> I tried to do this already and I came oh. back. So, like, yeah, Falmouth... That bit was that bit was easy. I'm quite glad. So, do you just a bit personal? But do you, uh, have any support from anyone's like based on like oh I want to have a big decisions now? Mm. Did anyone sort of like oh you shouldn't? Ooh, do that's that? an interesting question. Mm. Um, so I'm very lucky in that my parents were always. I think a lot of parents, if somebody's you know if their child turned around and was like mm. I want to drop out of uni, particularly if that uni was you know. Cambridge <laughs> um, mm. would be like are you sure about this <laughs> yeah. whereas my parents all things considered you know were pretty pretty okay with it I think because they'd known I'd been struggling a bit from the off so it maybe wasn't a complete surprise mm. to them although I did very much make my own mind up and then mm. and then tell them um, I think maybe I don't think there was anyone who was ever overtly like oh no this is a terrible idea but I think because I did that thing where I kind of bottled it all up mm. and then made my decision and then just started telling people to a lot of people it maybe seemed like it just came out of nowhere mm-hmm. so maybe some of my friends were a bit like in my best interests they were trying to be like are you sure that's a big decision and at that point I was like I am sure and I don't need more questioning I've made my decision mm-hmm. but I can completely understand and I think I even did it to another one of my friends like she did the same thing she chose to leave and I kind of did the are you sure and then she was like, yes, I'm sure I don't need that. And I was like, oh, of course, like, I, I should know that that's not helpful. So I get that it's very easy to do that. But generally, it was all smooth sailing. And I had lots of supportive people around me. Aww. So yeah. That Aww. was some wonderful things. Thank you so much, Anna. So right. How about you, Lucy? Can you share about your object as well? Yeah, so my object is actually hidden on my body somewhere <laughs> right now. <Aww. laughs> um, it's my ring. So I always wear it. Um, and it's a very pretty ring mm. um it's i can describe it for the listener yeah it's yes, gold please. um it's kind of got almost like a celtic knot it's not like got any gemstones or anything it's just like a gold band with like a celtic knot and some like almost like chain pattern going around it um but i it was my grandma's um so i was really really close with my grandma this is my dad's mum um and we actually all lived together until i was 11 i think 10 or 11 Mm. around that kind of age Mm. um and when we ended up moving house we actually deliberately moved house so they they are a five minute drive away I mean we've timed it it's exactly five (laughs) minutes um they live just around the corner and I used to see them even when we moved um I'd go to their house probably at least twice a week so really really close um and unfortunately my grandma was diagnosed with terminal cancer when I was I think 13 um and it was pancreatic cancer so it was it was quite quick um I think she was maybe diagnosed around Christmas and I think she died in maybe like March or April um so it do you know what I mean it wasn't like a long mm. a long time um because pancreatic cancer is usually quite aggressive um so when she died I actually wasn't in the country and I found out two weeks later because I was volunteering in Kenya um, and she died the day that I left. So my parents deliberately didn't tell me because they didn't want me to, you know, obviously be stuck in another country (laughs) sobbing my eyes out for two weeks. Um, And when we came back, my granddad sort of said, like, you know, if you'd like to go through 
her jewellery, for example, um, like, please go and have a look, like, take anything, because it's also worth mentioning I'm actually the only, I'm the only woman of my generation in my family. So I have a brother and I have six male cousins. Wow. Um, so it's quite, it's quite a male-dominated family. <laughs> so obviously jewellery usually is passed down, like, the women. Um, so my granddad was very much like, yeah, like, go have a look, take some jewellery. Um, and because I was obviously later finding out a lot of the stuff had already been taken, so there was a CD that I really wanted that someone else in the family had kind of taken anyway. Mm. Um, and I'm not a massive jewellery person, to be honest. I never really have been. Particularly not rings. I don't, I don't wear rings. Like, I like a good funky earring, <laughs> but... Um, it's rare to find a grandma that also likes a good funky earring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I was going through this jewellery box and there just wasn't really... Like, I, I took a couple of bits, which I still have. But I remember that my grandma would always wear these earrings that were, like, gold Celtic knots. Um, they'd also been taken by someone else. Oh um, mm. And I was looking through her jewellery box and I came across this ring. And obviously... I don't really remember ever seeing her wear it but because it's the same pattern as the earrings she wore I kind of immediately was like oh that maybe that would be quite a nice reminder um and weirdly I tried it on and it it is the perfect it's like it was handmade for me it fits perfectly um which was also quite nice like that was a nice kind of feeling of like like I, I actually I genuinely don't think a measured ring could fit me as well as this ring does like it's the perfect fit I was like this is really lovely mm-hmm. um but I wore that I think I got that the day of her funeral and I've worn it every single day since I don't take it off to sleep I don't take it off to shower um I think the longest I've taken it off for is when I make sweet potato gnocchi <laughs> <laughs> because the dough like kind of gets into it and it gets really like sticky and kind of mm. gross so I take it off then so I think the longest I've had it off in how old am I am I tw- how old oh my god how old am I I'm 23 <laughs> oh that was terrifying <laughs> um I was like oh, oh am I 19 am I 24 <laughs> forever <you know. laughs> so I, like I said, I think my grandma died when I was 13. I'm 23 now. Um, so it's coming up to the 10-year anniversary of her death. And I have literally worn this every single day for 10 years. And like I said, the longest I've had it off my body has been about an hour while I'm making gnocchi or something. Um, <laughs> so that's the object I bought because I really like it. And mm. I had this weird thing of like, I've been so busy today that when I kind of got home and I was like, right, I need to find an object and I kind of had this moment of like oh I could like maybe do that but oh that's at my studio and oh maybe I should get this but oh, I don't know and then I was like what why am I looking for other things like I wear this ring every day like I'll, ju- I'll just bring that um because I think it's got quite a nice story as well like it always it very much I don't notice I wear the ring anymore obviously mm. um but I think on the on the times that I do stop and notice it like it's always quite a like you know just a nice feeling I'm like oh yeah, this is this yeah. is like a nice reminder of something, um, of someone I really love. So mm. yeah, I thought I'd bring this. Thank you so much. And also I'm so sorry like you suddenly bring up like the memory from it. But can you able to share about the relationship from your grandma as well? Because I noticed like you guys have been having really strong bonding from yeah. it. But I would like to know about more about maybe you could share about oh, the relationship from I'd it. love to. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said, we obviously lived together. So my whole family lived in one big house. I think the most, I think the most there was at one point was maybe like 15 of us. Um, so it was a really big house. And we each had like our own little section of the house. So I'd like knock, knock on my grandma and granddad's door and be like, hello. <laughs> um, but I think my grandma in particular, I was really close to because I obviously am the only granddaughter which already gives me a little bit of a head start. Um, <laughs> like special. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think actually we're very similar personality wise. And my dad, I'm very similar to my dad as well. My dad is obviously very similar to grandma as well. Like the mm-hmm. three of us are all quite similar, I think. Um, and I just think she was the type of person that was really like, at least the memory I have of her is obviously she was very loving, like, you know, very caring. Like I loved her a lot. Um, But I think she really was like quite a strong person, but not, 
I, I don't know if this is maybe slightly cliche saying that like sometimes women in particular have that thing of like they're kind of you know she, she was so knowledge she was so intelligent like she loved gardening she was always quite kind of like mm. loving and soft but like she was just so like I always kind of felt like she had a really good like inner strength to her oh, um mm. which was really nice that she kind of had both like she was this lovely soft like caring person who also was a really strong and like a great role model for me um so I was really close to her I really yeah I was really close to her like she bought me she used to buy me books because obviously I love to read um she bought actually bought me my first ever like portfolio like for oh, putting art nice. in I've still got it it's great oh, wow. um so she was always really supportive of like what I wanted to do um yeah she was a really cool person I'm so thank you I mean I'm so glad like you guys having sort of like even though you guys been shared different objects but sort mm. of related with like family and supportive stuff mm. yeah. it's actually like yeah from love and generally I feel like it's so important that like sort of we having each other it's not like you're alone and something yeah and sort of I would like to bring up a other question as well you guys ready yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think I love the dramatic pause you're ready for this <laughs> so what is the most important things that you have learned in your life and what was your life like before learning and what was your life like after you're learning mm-hmm. it? It's like a really funny question, but sort of I feel like it would be really nice to brought it up based on like the support energy vibe yeah. and also the family yeah. as well. Would you guys to say it about it and share mm. about the experience yeah. from it? Do you want me to go first again or do you want to go first? I'm genuinely happy with either. <laughs> <laughs> cool, shall I? I'll, I'll go first. For continuity? I yeah. really don't mind. <laughs> I'll go with you. that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, I mean, I guess, so it's a, it's a big question. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's like an answer that springs to mind from my little chicken story that I think I'll go with. Um, so, um, so was the wording of it the most important thing you've learned in your life? Or, yeah, yeah? yeah an like, important thing you've learned. Mm-hmm. yeah um well I guess what the whole changing course thing taught me was that like it's so important to pick um to follow things that you're interested in and that like bring you joy which mm-hmm. potentially sounds obvious but it kind of clearly took me until that age to learn the importance of it I think it's very easy or when I was at school like it was kind of I very easily fell into the whole like just follow what you're good at or like kind of good grades is the most important thing um because that's definitely something that the school system mm-hmm. encourages um and so when it came to choosing like a uni course I was just like oh cool like I'll choose you know physics I'm, I'm good at that that will that will get me good monies mm-hmm. in the future um and then yeah when I got there like I said it was I was just kind of like so unhappy all of the time and I was like hmm this doesn't seem a great way of living and so it was obviously like a big risk to change what I was doing and there's a load of kind of like financial implications that come with that in terms of arguably art, art isn't the most uh like earning money. yeah <laughs> sort of like um you, you can't support your living course or something yes. I think that was like quite common from where I bought up as well so yeah I mean yeah. I don't I don't I mean we don't mind well we're just going to say the truth <laughs> yeah yeah it's a bit of a struggle but I'm like you know I wouldn't I've never regretted changing and I still don't regret doing it so I think that is something that's a very clear kind of moment in my life where it was like oh that's what it was like before in that I was constantly just trying to achieve the best mm. but not actually really taking that much time to think about what I like doing honestly don't know how I survived for so long like that I think I genuinely I wasn't unhappy like I think I was lucky in that like at school I was kind of I did suit that environment which is probably why I was okay because I like Mm. enjoyed the variation of doing different subjects and I had my little extracurricular activities like I was kind of ticking all the boxes and I was like getting by fine and then when everything changed and you're suddenly just concentrating on this one thing Mm. and your life's been kind of taken apart a little bit not to be dramatic but like you know, you've suddenly got to find your friends and find your hobbies all over again mm. um and I feel like it's very clear how yeah I was then and how I am now and it's still you know 
it's for everyone like it's still a struggle of kind of you can't just do what you enjoy all of the time like there's still a whole kind of balancing act to be had and Mm -hmm. yada 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 but yeah that was the before and after learning moment that I thought of that's just quite nice actually and also like you brought up from like change Mm. I think a change is like a really big work as well because I think like based on everyone been changing their every moment and also sort of upsetting a new chapter I would Mm. say uni is like a new chapter for Mm. us as well and yeah I always feel like you've been brought up like from changing and you know upsetting the things that you can't be what you want to do all the time Mm. and this is like quite important Mm. to know what you want and also to be the balance point from over fear from life I think in general yeah Mm. how about you easy what do you think about um this question like do you want me to (laughs) put up that question again (laughs) I think we're okay I think I kind of have an answer um I'd say maybe mine is slightly less well defined than Anna's (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I kind of thought that, again, obviously with the story I just kind of told about my grandma and that, um, I don't know how to phrase it, but almost like recognising your own strength or kind of, I guess for me, part of recognising my own strength was accepting that I can't make everyone happy all the time, Mm -hmm. um, and, like, you do have to have difficult conversations. Sometimes people upset you and you need to, like, verbalise that. Sometimes, like, maybe you need to cut off relationships with people who, like, you know, are just... It's not serving you. Um, not right for you. Yeah. Mm. And I think that was quite a big thing for me. Because um, I felt like I had that in a few different instances. And I do... Th- I think it's still very much an ongoing process. So I'm not sure I can really speak for the how I feel after because I feel like I'm sort of still going through it now but Mm. even compared to maybe like five years ago I feel like I'm infinitely more confident and that's you know outward confidence in that I feel okay doing like like coming on a podcast or like Mm. if I had to do a presentation for uni or something um or even coming to uni like I was exceptionally lucky that when I moved to uni um my transition was super easy. Like, I was so relaxed. I was a bit too relaxed, I think. <laughs> like, my dad just kind of dropped me off and he was like, all right, well, I'll see you at Christmas. I was like, yeah, bye. <laughs> um, and it was fine. Um, and I think actually, yeah, the amount of confidence I've gained just from recognising that actually, yeah, like, I, I am a really capable person. And, like, I, I am I am strong. I can be confident. I can do these things if I set my mind to it. I think that's made like such a big difference so it's not that I was ever unsure of myself I always think I have quite a good sense of self um Mm. and I think that's largely down to the people who raised me um because they've always been you know like really supportive um and very loving and that so I, I always feel like I've kind of had a good sense of who I am but I think it's a bit different like obviously when you're growing up and you're starting to like become independent or like move away Mm. it can be interesting trying to navigate how that strength comes out um so I found that quite an interesting thing because like I said I think me now compared to me five years ago are two weirdly similar people and yet also weirdly like totally different people (laughs) as well um so yeah I'm not quite sure if that answers your question but that was sort of what came to mind (laughs) I think it's a really good like answer I mean there's no like right around I would say because everyone like facing different like stuff different Mm. story different path and honestly it's like wonderful like how you brought it up from like um you being strong because I was thinking like um based on you share about your grandmother Mm. is a really strong person Mm. it's sort of like a reflection on like a role model from the generation from your mom um your dad from your grandma yeah and sort of is like educate from you and you didn't realize it's like Mm. because of that and you actually slightly changed to be that type of person or maybe that's why how you've been like stronger and you've been more confident it's like an experience yeah it's like really lovely oh i mean thank you guys for being (laughs) sharing like please experience Okay, so there's another question I would like to ask you guys. It's like, 
what made you feel inspired or like um, your best of yourself? Mm. <laughs> mm. You going first again for I continuity? Want, do you have or? an answer? I feel like I could probably wing wing it. Okay, well you you go, <laughs> then. you go. I'll break the continuity <laughs> after you. Um. So I think I think the reason I can answer this quite quickly is because I've actually been asked this question really recently. So mm. I sort of almost feel like I'm prepared. <laughs> ah. I was like, perfectly for you. Perfectly <laughs> for you. <laughs> um. But I think for me. The times that I feel my best or the most inspired are when I'm around people who are also creative. And I think it's when you have those like really good conversations where you just feel like you could like the conversation is just going, you know, Mm -hmm. like you've been talking for hours and it's still going. Um, And I think I think that's always quite nice because I feel like I'm quite an introverted person and my social battery runs out quite quickly. So I really value my alone time. I need a lot of space from people. Um, but also I do find that if I'm in the right situation, people give me energy. Um, but I think it does have to be people who, um, yeah, are willing to kind of have like a really good two way conversation with you or, you know, discuss like interesting theories or concepts, um, Mm. like come across new things, like new thoughts pop into your head. Like I always find that really good. Um, and I found whenever I was at uni and I got really stuck on something or, you know, got like artist block or just felt really like (laughs) kind of overwhelmed. I always found that like, yeah, like having a chat with Anna or like any of my other friends who were also in a similar position was the most helpful thing to move me past that. Mm. Um, because I also think I may be someone who sits in my own head a little bit. Mm. Like I kind of just sit and think. <laughs> mm. And then when I can't figure it out, I just sit and think some more. So I think having someone in my life that I can like verbalise things to and bounce ideas off. I think that's, I found from experience that that's when I'm at my best is when I'm around people who bring out the best in me, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's really nice. Thank you. Yeah, I mean... Not to jump on the bandwagon. Well, <laughs> I see you're about to jump on the bandwagon. It, it was it was infuriating because as you started talking, I was like, I think I'm gonna say like people, and then you were like, <laughs> so people. I was like, damn it. Um, but I agree in that, like, there's something. Again, I liked the wording of the question. You said like, what makes you feel your best? I think it was, and I agree in that. I think we both have very similar tendencies to kind of. Uh, I think I want to be on my own. And then when I'm actually forced to socialise, I'm like, I actually really liked that. I feel Um, like the same. (laughs) And it's that thing of, I think it's a comfort zone thing and a bit of a validation thing Mm. um, in that it's tempting to say like, oh, I feel my best when I've achieved something. But that's that's the kind of external validation. And actually, realistically, I feel like I spend most of my life kind of chasing like achievements but when I achieve those things, I don't actually feel that. I don't feel sad, but I don't feel like a, a rush of joy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Whereas, like, actually, those little kind of rushes of joy do come from, like you were saying, when you're having a really good chat with someone. Or, and again, it's that comfort zone thing of if you've pushed yourself out of your comfort zone and it's kind of it's gone well. There's yeah. that. It's that similar thing. And I think there's quite a big overlap between that and socialising. Um, and not to make it really fine art and networking but <laughs> I think I find that particularly recently I've been trying to like make an effort to go to more sort of uh, I, I hate the word networking because it makes it clinical but you know like more events where you're going to meet meet like-minded people yeah mm-hmm. and it's always scary to go into them because you're like oh what if no one talks to me and like mm. ah and then you kind of go and actually you do talk to some people and you have a really nice chat because yeah. you know mm. you're at an event that you've all chosen to go to and you come away and you're like oh I did it and I've made some you know some new friends and it's all like I feel great kind of thing so mm. I, I I agree basically <laughs> it's yeah kind of chatting to like-minded people and yeah getting to know new people lovely thank you guys I was actually was sort of based on you guys conversation <laughs> and when I was like mm, I was like thinking there's a few words that I want to repeat cap for it's mm-hmm. like um overcome mm-hmm. upset change mm-hmm. also it's sort of like listen to your body yeah mm-hmm. because i feel like there are quite few words that remind me to how to 
really listen to your body about how you've been feeling and also try to be overcome and try to open up to people so I mean sometimes I've got like a bit anxiety from talk to lots of people in one go and it's like <laughs> quite overwhelming it's yeah. like I don't know what's going on and you know sometimes it usually like I mean sort of bottom from fine art now you know it's always like lots of people love to chat with you and sort of like oh what is your work and you know you sort of like I don't know how to describe it it's like I don't know how to talk about my work mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on it's just like you're so scared that people would bite you in some way it's like they don't harm you it's like but it's like because it's like people are so excited and yeah. energetic like want to know about you a lot and just not like sort of ready or prepare for that Mm -hmm. but sort of in some way that's like happy accidents because of you don't expect it like people being open up to you in like a first made us you know the first impression so i think it's like a it's like it's such like a gift in Mm. some way but yeah i mean thank you guys i feel like i would like to ask you guys would you mind to shut up like share to the audience or to anyone that if something you you wish you would like to learn beforehand or something that is quite important to know now mm. so uh, another kind of a life lesson something to take forward yeah, oh. mm-hmm. yeah I, before we end up the I do. I do have one oh. please go for it because I do not <laughs> okay. um, so something that I heard someone recently say about I think they said that it was the point of their art and I really liked it about art also generally is um and it's going to sound really uh simple but they said the point of their art was to make people pay attention and I really like just the idea of yeah just paying attention like I think it's so easy to kind of go onto automatic pilot and drift Mm. your way through the world and kind of do the default routes um but kind of stopping and slowing down and paying attention to the little things all the big things just 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 paying attention i think is uh a valuable i don't know if i can say it's a life lesson as such but i hope that vaguely answers what you wanted i mean i observe any questions okay. or any answer, honestly. i mean it's a it's a gift from because you guys bring up like the things that you gave it to me that I don't expect it you know okay. so it's nice. always good to know anything <laughs> I mean I'm not like knowledgeable I would say like I'm like zero mm. because of you guys I will gain the experience from okay. zero to maybe in the future like hundred or something more <laughs> yeah but it's a long journey but I'm thinking yeah it's like even the tiny simple things you you don't realize it's because it's like too simple mm. and sometimes just like people want to jump over the process a lot and just like i want to get the end i know i want to have the result but sometimes i think simple and process is always really important so it's actually really like a life lessons and also yes yeah, it's, it's important mm. and we need to realize it mm. how about you easy what do you think about it or you, you don't need to like Said it if he doesn't have it any. I do. I have actually thought of something. Oh, go for it. (laughs) So I, as a bit of context, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I think the laugh says all you need to know. I'm I'm a real perfectionist. Um, and like, I think a lot of people have the misconception that perfectionist is just is quite a nice thing to be like oh you just kind of do it until it's perfect perfect doesn't exist though and it means it's quite an exhausting way to live and i can't say i love that quality um Mm. like i'm trying quite hard to let go a little bit and relax Mm -hmm. and i recently read in like this workbook that i was Mm -hmm. given um if you're a perfectionist one of the things you should remind yourself or tell yourself or kind of have as like some kind of like mantra um is 80 percent is the new 100 percent and i just it's so simple but it really like it's been lodged in my brain since i read it and i think it's just really resonated with me and actually every day now like if i'm ever feeling like a little bit lazy or like i'm procrastinating because obviously a large part of being a perfectionist is that you do a lot of procrastination and i do a lot of procrastination mm. so every time i'm procrastinating or every time that i'm like talking myself out of going to the studio um i kind of just remind myself i'm like 80 percent is in you 100 like it doesn't matter if all i do is 
put away like two bits of clothing in my room or if I go to the studio and I literally go for 10 minutes Mm. like that 10 minutes I've spent in the studio is 10 minutes more than I would have done otherwise and the likelihood is if I go for 10 minutes I'll probably stay a bit longer than 10 minutes as well like I'm already there I'm already doing the work I think it's just making yourself do those first steps and I found that that's been quite useful for me so that's my little nugget of wisdom because it seems to be working wonders for me at the moment so it might come in useful for someone else I find it really useful thank you so much I'm like the best friend of like raising my yes I find it very useful (laughs) because I got like a stressful like um, process at the moment from uni my Mm. final year and also it actually remind me of my first podcast, like, uh, home cast from uh, my guest, Felix. Mm-hmm. Um, they were talking about if you can't focus on, like, multiple tasks, yeah. focus on one thing from the starting point. And when you focus, it is actually, like, even though it's not, like, a lot, but actually in one of the way in the contact, they actually assist and also it work because yeah. you actually do something you just like not love nothing. yeah you're not like overwhelmed by kind of everything yeah. you're like right just this one thing i can do this one thing yeah so i think it was so lovely to learn and i feel like i've been knowledgeable from so many things today <laughs> just like in in like um i don't know like 36 minutes long it's just <laughs> maybe we're like wow i need to keep noticing and <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for being oh, no, not here. Thank with you me. for having us. And thank you for the wonderful food again. Keep Aww. saying it. <laughs> You've been a wonderful host. It's been really oh, lovely. Bless you guys. Thank you so much.